Now we didn't paint it. It's a different one. Got finished with the blue one last night, like we had in the other video. My other nephew, his brother, he has the uh, thing was this SRT, and uh, wouldn't wouldn't start for him. No crank, no start. So I told him to uh, get a boost. It's just a battery and uh, buy a battery, bring it down, I'll change the battery out. And then I'll test this one because he's going to take it to a shop to get the battery tested. It's, it's not worth it, bro. It's like three or four years old. It's probably toast. So uh, got the battery tester on it. Schumacher, I've had this thing for a long time. It still works. 12.43, it seems like it's good, but we got to gotta load test it. So uh, I'm gonna go through here, 730 cold cracking amps. Boom, there we go. It only has 240, even though it has the correct voltage, 12.4 or higher, fully charged battery, it has a bad cell and it only has 240 cranking amps. So that, that'll trick you, you know what I'm saying? You look at the needle in the car, if your car has one, some cars. Back in the day, cars used to have a battery voltage meter. I don't know if cars today have that or not. But anyway, it's a bad battery. So gave me an opportunity to, uh, go ahead and be able to help him out, change that out for him. So uh, I used, uh, I used this thing, my little quarter inch impact. I don't know what's up with that, man. Okay. Quarter inch impact, 10 millimeter socket, and then uh, the take, I'll show you. And then I got to test out my Coke and nut grip sockets for uh, putting it back in. So, uh, that little mount down there, hold down 10 millimeter bolt. This was, it was easier to uh, just use my little coconut grip to uh, put that in. If you had magnetic sockets, that would have worked too. Um, but when you start running in a stainless steel, of course, that's not gonna work, which is why I bought the coconut grip sockets. And then the only other thing I mentioned is the new battery does not come with the elbow for the vent tube for when the battery is gassing. So they can vent that to the outside because they have the battery on the inside. Basically, the trunk is a part of the cabin. And the way they were able to do that without violating any safety things is they vent the battery much like in an RV. They have a vent coming from the battery going to the outside. They also have a strap to uh, hold the battery in place. So... They really don't want this thing moving around. And I guess people drive these cars kind of spirited. So uh, they knew that they needed to take some extra precautions on that. So when it was time to put this back together, I used the uh, the 3.8 and the, oh, wait a minute. Hold up guys. I just, this was stuck on the side of the battery. It did, it did come with it. That's good. It did come with the, uh, the vent. Elbow, nice, nice. And uh, got this from O'Reilly's Auto Parts. It was uh, $235. Now, the sucky thing was when he went by O'Reilly's, they told him that they would have to charge him to check to see if the battery was bad. I admit, that's, no they don't. Uh, there's no fee for that at the auto parts store. If you take it to a regular shop, they're going to charge it because you got to pay a guy. But uh, they're supposed to just check the batteries for you. You know, There's no charge for that. But you know what I always say, people suck. So 
people are lazy. They don't want to do the job. So they tell you whatever to get you out of their face. Either way, Andy still end up spending a couple hundred bucks with him buying a battery. This is the original battery. And uh, I'm going to see if this is one of those uh, stupid so-called maintenance-free batteries to where you can't check the water in it or not. Let me pop that up and see if the little circles are under here. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it's going to come up. Let's see. This battery's no good anyway. Sure is not making it easy for you to add water to it. If you, if you can. Because when they sell you a lead acid battery and they say that it's maintenance free, it just means that you got a worse battery because they make something sound good that's not good because it just means that you can't add water to the battery to extend the life of it. it the heat naturally evaporates out. It's just a lead acid battery. But yeah, it's like they got these. Yeah, I see them in there. It's like they don't want you to, uh, they don't want you to be able to add water to it so you can, you know, like help the battery last a long time. I don't know why. Well, I do know why, but it's kind of sucks. All right, so you can get to it. It just didn't make it easy, but you can get to it. There we go. So. Okay, looks like it has some clips on the side. And that's where you could like add your distilled water. Uh, it says it has a dead cell. They're all kind of low. Some worse than others. But yeah, it's supposed to be able to add distilled water to these things. The fins aren't showing though. The uh, the the, uh, the electrodes is not showing, so it's, they're still submerged in water. Well, yeah, anyway, it has a dead cell. I was thinking about putting more water in it, charging it up again, and, uh, like, desulfating the battery. I have a mode to do that on my battery charger. But nevertheless, I will... Oh, I found a misfire counter on the thing. I was watching my video, and as I was scrolling through, I saw it. So while I'm shooting the video, I'm looking at everything through the phone. So I, I can't see things that I would normally see if I wasn't looking at it through the phone. And when I try to shoot the videos without looking at the phone, the ain't, I, sometimes stuff's not in the shot. So, yeah. So I'll... Uh, I'll do it on this car. I kind of really wanted to do it on the other one because it changed all the coil packs. I wanted to see if the thing had any misfires, but my nephew lives far away and he, he only came down so I could do that. So uh, he had to go back the next day. So I said, oh, well, I will uh, just let it roll. You know, I, I didn't, it took a test drive. It didn't bring in any check in like or anything like that. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, what do I do with the keys for this thing? Uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, I told him to buy a jump box, man. Jumper cables. Never know what's wrong with the person's car to jump you off. Oh. I don't give people jump to my, my vehicles. I don't know what you got going on with your car. I'm gonna damage my car electronically. I might have something crossed up. All right. So I'm looking for the, uh, the ODB two port. 
All right, got that. Turn the car on so I can um, check them out. Drop the glass. Kill the noise. Oh, he's got the climate control on. Turn that on. Let off. Save the battery. And uh, that's what I like about the scanner. As soon as you, uh, if the scanner is on and you plug in the VCI, it's already ready to rock and roll. It's already done the uh, the auto van and whatnot. I'm pretty far away from my access point, but this scanner has a good enough uh, antenna in it that it still it still picks it up. So I had another viewer. He he was leaving a comment. You know, he was just trying to help out. He was like, "Yo, don't you don't know, don't ever use the the modem or whatever that that comes with your uh, service from your ISP," and like. The other scanners that had problems connecting, it's not because of the modem. It's because they have a sorry antenna in them because my phone, all my iPhones work and uh, this scanner works. As you can see, I'm not on my hotspot. This is like reaching almost 200 yards away to that access point that's in my house, the actual modem that came with it. And, and it's able to hit it and as you can see, it has unlocked the gateway successfully. All right, so yeah, I understand that you can get better APs with longer range. I used to be a network guy. I used to actually do network management, server management, remote server management. I've worked as an assistant network administrator. So I know more about that stuff than most people would care to know but I'm not having a problem with that. It's actually a really good, um, it's a really good uh, modem that comes with the Trico link, it's, which is fiber to the home and it's, a, it's very robust and the antennas on it are awesome because I'm very far away from my house right now and it's still working. So like I saw that the uh, the misfire counter was like inside like the ODB um, information. Let me start start the uh, start the vehicle. Now his check engine light is on because he needs oxygen sensors and just something else just to. Like, everybody likes tinting the windows on their cars. It's like the new fad. Well, most of your new cars have a camera, and it's right there. It's in the middle behind the, uh, the mirror. And that camera is what controls your collision avoidance system. That, that camera is used for your automatic braking, emergency braking, and stuff like that. And when you put that tent on the windshield, that camera doesn't work anymore. And you'll get a code in the BCM telling you that the camera is blocked. So you lose all of those active features that make the car safer to have tent on your windshield. I mean, not worth it to me. I wouldn't do it anyway. I don't care if the car didn't have that. I just, I would never obstruct my own view. Um, whatever. But uh, it's a popular thing. People have been doing it for years. They, they like doing it. I think it, it looks cool. To them, it looks cool. Um, so it is what it is. Oh, back to the scanner. So uh, yeah, I was looking for it in the PCM. And uh, I saw that on the other Challenger, it was in the ODB2 information. The, uh, the misfire counter. So, well, 
how to look at it on this one. little bud my access point is back there There it is, right there. So it, it is in the PCM, but after the P, inside the PCM, I have to go to uh, ODB2 monitors. That's what I, I couldn't find because I kept going to read things. There it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just want the misfire counters. So this is what I wanted to do on the other car after I uh, after I uh hey. Yeah, I just wanted to miss the uh the misfired data which car's not misfiring at all there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with this car pcm now i did just change the battery so some of the stuff could be battery related um uh, lost communication with active exhaust valve okay low voltage the battery died on this car bcm so a lot of these are going to be yeah related to the batteries yeah All right, took it for a test drive. Put some gas in it. Enough if you didn't have any gas in it. Uh, it's probably thinking about that dead battery and just getting down here instead of us. Uh, I mean, I probably wouldn't want to stop either. The car is acting up. I'm trying to get to my location. But I went ahead and hooked them up. Topped, filled up his tank. Some premium petrol. And uh, let me scan this baby again and see what the codes really are. So now that we got rid of all the uh, battery stuff, there's just too many codes on the screen. Unlock successfully, yes. That's why I bought the scanner, guys. I bought the scanner so I can work on Chrysler vehicles, FCA vehicles, without having to go through the uh, gateway on a day that I needed it. I needed it like right then and there, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna update. I was trying not to update my Autel scanners, and uh, then I ended up updating um, my IM508 anyway after I got this one, because it was just like $240. The updates were like $100 cheaper than they normally are. So I was like, yeah, at that rate, <laughs> I'm going to keep that one updated now. It's the cheapest scanner I got to update. Only bad thing is no ADOS. I am 508, the, the original one, no ADOS. I don't know if the 508S has ADOS or not. I have to see if it does. If it does and it's supported, um, I would probably buy one. Um, because then I'd have a full feature scanner with ADOS where the updates are only $250 a year. 
versus the 500 and everything. This thing's beeping because it's online and all the updates and the, the Gmail because I got you had to put like set up a Gmail on it. So now we're just down to two trouble codes. All right, these two trouble codes about the active exhaust, that's gonna be the device that Chrysler started putting in the Hemis that have um, to keep the noise down at idle. So the scanner says it's an O2 sensor, but it's really not the O2 sensor. All the vehicles don't have it. I think they only put this on the V8s and what it is, is it's basically a baffle. It's a little flap that has a small circle in the middle of the ring. And there's a valve that actuates that with a spring. And that's how they try to keep these Chryslers quiet when you're at wide open throttle and while you're at an idle. Kind of, uh, I don't want to say it's kind of dumb because some people want the car to be quiet and they don't want to hear all the uh, motor noise inside the vehicle. And, uh, you know, I guess to, so the neighbors are not angry or whatever, so you can't hear.